dear ones. You're listening to the What God Is Not podcast with Father Michael O'Loughlin and Sister Natalia. Hello. We have exactly zero people watching. I have no um, idea if we do. I don't even know how to know. Can you tell? We're I got to get my head over even closer. There we go. Joined. Someone join. All right. We have a couple of people. Okay. All right, let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this podcast. Thank you for the personalities, the temperaments, the vocations that you've given us. Thank you for this technology. And thank you for these listeners. Please allow everything we say to be of you. Please allow us to hear what you desire us to say and to speak of it. Please let us use the gifts you've given us to build up your kingdom. Please allow what your word is to settle in the hearts of those who are listening and watching. And please remove from their hearts, from their minds, anything that we may say that may get in the way of what you, what your message is, what your good news is, and what will lead them to salvation. As we pray, Christ is risen from the dead. By, by death, death, he trampled, trampled death. And to those in the, the tombs, he granted life. life. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Whoa, a lot of people right. joined on. Hi, lots of people. <gasps> Sarah Stacy. Hi, Sarah Stacy. Sorry, I got to see if anybody asked questions that or something. Five. That's funny. Okay. Make oh, that. I guess I think you guys can see better than we can. Oh, uh, Shalimar's on here. Hi, Shalimar. Um, so this is my first time ever doing Instagram live. <laughs> um, so we're, uh, yeah, we're, he we're, was we're, a we're pretending when we we're started. pretending to be competent here, and uh, thank God we have an audience of one Polly Oleos here behind behind the camera who you can't see. I'm Paul Laxons. Oh, they there's see there's messy eighteen desk. of you, seventeen of you. Voice to the voice, could I say? All right. I, I hear that those watching back can't see the this comments, so we're going to have to read the questions. Oh. Ola the Burdener. Um, um, this is so cool. <laughs> she's a nun. Just ignore her. Um, so for those listening at home, because we are recording this as a podcast too, um, we're also doing this one on Instagram Live. So both, both sister and I are kind of like, this is so weird. It's so um, strange. But okay, did you? Oh, Okay, so we, we want this to be... How are you doing, sister? <laughs> I'm doing well. What are you drinking? I'm drinking out of Monkey this, brains. Monkey brains. I'm drinking Sister's monkey Sister's drinking brains. monkey brains. I'm drinking a hard kombucha, what the young people call the booch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really... You got to keep your face in the screen. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, we're not very... We're still getting used to this. Um, um, let me try Someone's again. excited to hear this, What the young this, people call the booch. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, Father Michael's been teaching me since, all sorts since, of things. This since week you won't laugh at my jokes normally, I just say funny words and <laughs> I get you to laugh, like authentically laugh. Okay. I'm having a heart kombucha. She's having monkey brains. Um, monkey brains. This welcome. Is, this is Cowboy's coffee mug. So shout out to Cowboy. It's not. Well, it's the parish, but it's, par- it's yeah. his. Like- Cowboy adopted it and is allowing you to use his, his coffee mug from the parish. Yeah. A shout out to Cowboy who could not be here, who wanted to be here, but mm-hmm. um, oh, thank you, Avery. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pretend like all of your handles are just <laughs> what your name. Avery Jill Birdwork. <laughs> that looks like it hurt. What? He really is this way. When I probably when I like choked on my monkey brains. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, when monkey brains came out her nose. All yeah. right. So as our seven minutes of banter are just gonna be our um, our complete this is going to be really hard Our for me because i'm so easily distracted yeah it's just going to be us trying to figure out instagram live yeah well, ig live what is this called instagram, instagram live. live okay yeah sorry we, we sound so old like i am old look i'm only 30 i know that's what i'm saying you sound old and you're not i am old and i am <laughs> i sound i sound old and i am Okay. All right. We need to do holy things for the holy. Okay. But um, we, so, so what's. Oh, sorry. You have to leave. Oh. It's Julia 17. God bless you. Um, do you know what's sad though is that I realized, um, not sad, but like kind of weird. Also, we have to, to fit in this screen, we have to sit like really close and this is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> can you make the but, creepiest face you can? No. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, the. No, what I what I realized nobody screenshot that. <laughs> Thirty is old. Oh snap! The burner Whatever. just called you old. It's Craig Kinsey. <laughs> you are dismissed. Um, <laughs> I um no, I realized that like the the podcast in which we explain why I'm still in LA comes out next week. Oh, 
Yeah. So that's weird. Sister, for those of you watching this live, um, sister is still in Los Angeles because she left the monastery. That is not (laughs) true. That is horribly scandalous. I did not leave the monastery. Father Michael had COVID. She just likes wearing her habit. I had COVID, (laughs) for those of you just learning this. Um, Yes. uh, And we didn't discover it until literally the night before sister was supposed to go home. Mm Mm-hmm. So God bless Mother Theodora, who we had to call literally the day of her flight home and ask for her wisdom. And so then she got tested. I got tested officially. Um, Shout out to you know who you are, who gave me a bunch of COVID tests. Um, So we both took took the ghetto home COVID test. um, And I was positive she was negative. But then we both got officially tested. I was positive she was negative. But she's still been here for two more weeks almost. She leaves tomorrow. Yeah. As long as nothing weird happens. Um, she leaves tomorrow to go back home to her monastery. That's true. Um, yeah. So that's also why we can sit so close together is because yeah. you are out of quarantine at this point. I'm out of quarantine. You're out of quarantine. And yet we know that neither have COVID now. That's yes. authoritative. I'm done with it. It's been through the cycle. Yes. And I tested again yesterday. Yeah. And was negative again. I did realize, concerned listeners, though, that um, keep praying for me because the one thing that I, I just discovered this morning is that I still can't smell anything. I didn't even know that was one of the issues. But I, I You've always had such a bad sense of smell. Though. I've always had a bad sense of everything. Yes. Everything. Humor. Prudence. Um, <laughs> sight. I have a pretty good sight. Prudence. Yeah. <laughs> but like pretty good sense, sense of sight. Of but like prudence, the, the other ones, <laughs> the other ones are, the other ones have not been so good. But anyway, the only reason I know is because I don't normally smell things on purpose, but I, I, I took, I had like, um, what are the good, good nature, new nature, happy nature. What's the tea brand that has the sweet and spicy? Oh, sweet and spicy. Good earth. Good earth. Good earth. Um, oh, that is the best tea. And I love that because I really, my taste buds aren't so good, but I can normally smell it really well. Mm-hmm. And I tried to have some this morning, could not smell a thing. And that was my first notice of like, oh, I must have lost my smell when I had COVID. Um, but it just lingers, which I hear happens with a lot of people. So that is the only tea I've ever had that tastes as good as it smells. Yes. And the other tea, you smell it and you're like, this is going to be amazing. And then you taste it and you're like, this tastes like hot water. Shout out to uh, Aviano Coffee Shop in Denver. Mm -hmm. Lovely coffee coffee shop. I blessed it before they opened. I blessed the uh, Detroit Street location before they opened. Um, So it's just, it's a cool holy place with one of my favorite places to go. Um, Also, there is one of the professors from... Wait, does Aviano have a good tea? Because you just said I, shout I, out I, I'm going to have a bunch of perlas in a row. Okay. And then I'm going to get back to the point. You might have to remind me what the original was. Okay. Um, anyway, th- but they have a, one of the professors in the Augustine Institute. His son works there too. So anyway, shout out to, I forget his first name, last name's Innerst. Um, but yeah, so they have a, what's called turmeric tonic that is probably the best tea I've ever had in my life. Mm. If you like turmeric. But it, it's, it's not like sweet and spicy from Good Earth is... Just it's like a good tasting tea. The turmeric tonic it hits you like as an aftertaste. And I love that because like it just doesn't taste like much. And all of a sudden this aftertaste of just sweet turmeric. And I didn't even know what turmeric was until I had that. I really like turmeric, but when I have too much, oh Leah, um, when I Leah Darrow, when I have too much, my tongue gets kind of pink. It just says waves. I mean, we wave at her. Yeah, I think <laughs> if you press that, it waves to her. Oh, or maybe she, Paul. What happens if we press wave? Oh. You waved at Leah Darrow. That's nice. Um, <laughs> you know what's really funny is I actually told, I think I told you, and I told our media team that I was going to ask my friend Leah Darrow about like how to do this because I've never, never done it before. Uh-huh. And then I forgot, Leah, sorry. Oh. But you're on here. So, well, Paul um, was here to help us, which was good. Uh, Whoa, what are all those things that just happened? Just Leah's, Leah's hitting love. She's hitting, wow. she's hitting hearts. Aw, thank also, you, Leah. Also, just Junta. AKA Jen Junta. <laughs> so Leah, please give all of my God kids and my other non God kid children of yours a kiss on the forehead for me. Yes. So um, turmeric, I really like, but when I have too much, my tongue gets tingly. Does anyone else have that? I don't That's... think I've ever had too much. Oh, we have. We you just like what? sometimes for. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. <I'm kidding. laughs> we'll edit that out. No, we literally. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> um, the oh, um, I missed them too. What is Leah. happening? What's all? Are you sure those are all Leah? How the do you first know that? One was look because Leah's face is le- oh, like we have Leah's head going up with the. Uh, 
that's funny. Along with the hearts. <laughs> um, okay, we said this was going to be a Q and A, and there's, but we have sometimes at the monastery during fasting periods I for that. on brunch we do. Um, it's fun watching old people discover technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, um, thanks, bud. <laughs> we Father Michael taught me about Tupac today. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was she like, didn't. She died? I was um, I was like quoting <laughs> Tupac, and she's like, "Who's that?" Maybe you shouldn't be quoting Tupac. I don't see no changes. <laughs> All I see is racist faces. Um, <laughs> Just like Cage. <laughs> Please stop. She's like, who's Tupac? I'm like, what kind of an American are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, at the monastery during fasting period, sometimes on for brunch, I'm like... The, all the little hearts just are very hard to not watch. Um, Do you have ADD much? Says you. Okay. The, <laughs> Talking to the mic. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Make um, fun of me into the mic. Okay. Get mad at me into the mic. Sometimes, this is the, I think this is the fourth time I've tried to start this. During <laughs> the, um, during fasting periods, sometimes for brunch, we have scrambled chickpeas with turmeric on them. And when I eat them, my tongue gets tingly. Oh. Maybe you're allergic to chickpeas. No, we we have chickpeas. It's that person doesn't know Tupac either. So check yourself. Um, how, how old are you, that person? <laughs> Shy modeler. <laughs> Shy modeler. Shy modeler. 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 Oh, Shy modeler, like yeah. science modeler. Yeah, maybe that's Judy because Judy's a modeler. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You cannot, don't just call our listeners Wait, nerds. Let's, let's do, do the eye roll. Do the I, I, Like the frustrated look on the face, you can see they can see that right now. But those who have never seen the eye roll, do the eye roll. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Nice. Um, 22. Oh, it's Judy. I told you I thought it might be Judy. <laughs> she okay. called it Judy. Oh, she's only 22. Tupac, I think, was dead before you were born. Um, see, Antoinette knows Is Tupac. Tupac a brand of ice cream? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, um, we promised that this was going to be a Q&A Sorry. episode. And we are like... Cue me up. 13 minutes in. Cues. Um, so... Cues. I thought, oh, are we do you gonna, want me to do one from oh, here? Sorry. We want to see if anyone um, has one Go first. ahead and st- not not only who is Tupac. But- Turmeric has a mild numbing effect. Wow. Okay. The, look, the listeners are answering my questions. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> best Q&A ever. Um Yes, Avery says Tupac is a legend. Tupac is a legend. And now that I live in California, and I just saw Jen Junta jumped up here. Junta. Junta. <laughs> Junta. Jen Junta, my old parishioner, who I should know how to pronounce her last name, um, just said West Side. Did you see that? Okay, That's, I did see it. Okay. I'm going to give... Live, I live in California now. You've lived here over the past three I'm weeks. I'm going to give 30 <laughs> seconds for anyone on here, except my watch no, stopped no, 20 just, seconds. So please ask questions. I know that's what I'm saying, but if no questions come up in the next 30 seconds, I'm going to... I know we can fill 30 seconds, but how about you how about you ask one of the questions from there okay. and then we'll do the other ones. Okay. I'm going to have to scroll. So ig- ignore my awkwardness while I look for questions. Or just your awkwardness in general. Yeah, that too. Okay, so we have a, we have a question that somebody who could not join us tonight yes. wrote in because of our story that we're doing this. Okay, Christ is risen. Hello, Indeed Sister Natalia and Father Michael. Did we even start with Christ is risen today? Yes, Paul says yes. Okay. Um, I'm unsure if I'll be able to make it to the Instagram live. I probably didn't need to read this whole thing, but I did. If you see this and answer the question, it would be wonderful. My question is, how have you, um, or what advice do you have for people with severely melancholic personalities that are highly susceptible to caving to their feelings slash anxieties Slash getting inside their head often. Getting inside their own head often. Um, so Father Michael, I think, can answer this well because he is severely melancholic. Stop it. Sarcasm. That's my... Okay. Um, Walk it off. <laughs> I'm such a good spiritual father. You're the worst. No, I, so I, I will give you... Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that I am not severely melancholic. However, I, I've, I've found that so that with the different temperaments, the choleric and the melancholic and the whatever, you know, um, sanguine and... What's the fourth one? Um, choleric. Phlegmatic. I already said choleric. <laughs> I'm paying attention. <laughs> um, I'm reading the questions that come with, in. With the four temperaments, um, I've realized that um, you can test Father Michael it's really hard for <laughs> oh, me to sorry. do this when you're talking Lindsay <laughs> Riley came on sorry <laughs> go ahead um, the, that with the four temperaments even though um, like 
you, we have aspects of each of them, right? And so I'm, I'm not, I'm not a melancholic. I'm like, if I'm going to be classified um, as anything, I would be a um, choleric sanguine. But um, and Father Michael is just like sanguine, phlegmatic, all over the place, faux show. Like ninety eight percent of each. That doesn't make any sense. I know That's not that the test possible. I took said that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, don't know. I think it's like what percentage it was like you're 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 literally have two percent choleric qualities, two percent melancholic qualities, ninety eight percent of the okay. other qualities. Um so so anyways, I, I'm not melancholic. However, um you have to look at the questions because I'm seeing this and it's really hard Just for me. It. Okay. Yeah. Um however, one of the, the aspects, one of the like um, characteristics of melancholic that I do have is I feel things very deeply. And um, as Father Michael can attest to, um, and I'm very sensitive and I'm very apt to just... So So, anyways, um, it is easy for me to fall into just like giving into anxieties. Um, and so even though I'm not um, deeply melancholic as the question described, I would say that... Um, that I struggle with, with giving into the anxieties and, and um, being overwhelmed and getting stuck in my own head. And this happened last week, actually, because like I'm here isolated on quarantine. I can't even hang out with my spiritual father because he's in quarantine and I was just totally stuck in my head. Um, and none of that is an answer of how to get out of this. How did I get out of that? My um, answer would be, don't get out of it. I mean, for, well, first of all, first of all, God made you melancholic. Like the, the, these are personality traits. But like the ruminations and the getting stuck in your head. Like how do you get out of right. that? Okay, okay. Um, I think you, you need like a, a long-term relationship with somebody. But I think the first thing is like, yes, you're melancholic for a reason. Like your, your mission in this world is to feel really, really deeply. And, and one of the, and that, that can be so incredibly good. Like I think I, I, have, I have hurt people because I'm so sanguine phlegmatic. I forget names. I forget like really important moments. I think if I was married- You forgot my name last week. I didn't forget it. I just said, I said your I just said name. the wrong one. I said your old name. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> then you smiled in the middle of receiving the Eucharist and I'm like, you almost made me laugh. I'm distributing the Eucharist. Anyway. Um, <laughs> You forgot what you were yes, saying. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that, thank you. People I, I've you're, hurt people yeah. because I, and if I was married, I think that I can imagine that some of like me and my wife's most beautiful moments together that she would treasure and write about in her little journal and, and like buy me flowers every year on the anniversary of this event. Um, and then I'd be like, thanks, honey. And she was like, do you know why I'm buying you these flowers? And I go like, um, cause you love me. And she's like, yes, but like five years ago, we had this amazing moment together and I'll be like, wonderful. I'm so glad that happened. It probably changed me, but I don't remember it at all. And so, so melancholic people it have such, such good they feel deeply, and that can be such a incredibly beautiful thing. With the, as with every personality, there's positives and negatives. I know this sounds cliche, but it's true. The devil knows the negatives. He knows the ne so he's going to work on those. So that that is your cross. I promise you. I, <laughs> I promise you. Someone's already making fun of me. Um, I promise you that that every personality, every temperament, every person has their crosses, and so. That's a really good question, dear listener. Like that's a really good question. Um, but please, I, I just want to, for for my own sake here, just please know that you have more positives to that personality than you do negatives. And and the world and the kingdom of God needs people that are that that feel that deeply, that are that sensitive to things. And and even with the negatives, like to get out of our own head, um, which is well, the devil's working on that. So so first of all, just continue to grow in holiness, like receive the gift of faith that God has given you um, and that he continues to give you. And as you grow in holiness, the devil will have less power over you. As you grow in holiness, you'll become more united with Christ. And so you, your the negative parts of your personalities with everybody's will become less debilitating to you and less harmful to the other people in your life. And so this is just, this is just how this is. So I think 
one of the ways is to, I would say, make sure you're always learning about who Jesus Christ is because the, the, the debilitation that comes with any personality, especially I think the more scrupulous melancholic types, the, 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 when that's debilitating, it's, it's because we don't understand how incredibly compassionate, forgiving and unconditionally loving Jesus Christ is. Hmm. Um, if, if, and that, that's, that's what the phlegmatics and the sanguines I think do so well is and yet we have there's a negative side to that as well. But there's a there's a and again I've said this before. I know I cannot imagine doing anything, and this is just a pure gift from God in my temperament. Imagine doing anything that would make God even ignore me for a moment. Like I I, I have a very deep assurance, and God willing, He will give me this consolation until the rest of my life. A very deep assurance of God's unconditionally and eternal unconditional eternal love for me. Um, and, and so I cannot, like I can imagine hurting him. I can imagine him needing to discipline me harshly. I can imagine all those things, but none of that in my mind has ever, up to this point in my life, has ever affected my knowledge of his love for me. Um, so like working a little bit towards that end, getting out of your own head and, and focusing only on who Jesus is. And I would highly recommend you read the gospel of John and focus on the I am statements. I am, I am. If you read John six, especially if you read about, I am the good shepherd, I am the gate, I am the bread of life. I am all these things. And, and you literally just focus on those things in a sense. I like how you, what's, who, are we not mentioning names? But anyway, whoever it was, I like, like dear listener, you, if you focus on that, then you will in a sense, really get out of your own head because you're only focusing on, on who Jesus is. And, and when we forget about ourselves, we have kind of a self forgetfulness, um, a, a lack of, of gazing inward because we're looking at Jesus. And as, as I've said in a homily recently, the, the, this came from, this comes from St. John Clam, uh, Climacus. I think I even brought it up in a, in a podcast. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, you, you look at Jesus first. And once you've looked at him, then you look at yourself and you let, you let your, what you learn from looking at Jesus, you let that affect how you see yourself. Mm. And then you let how you see yourself affect your behavior and what you ask for in prayer. So don't look at yourself first or you're just gonna get, get depressed. <clears throat> get out of your head. And it sounds like, like how you said that and look at Jesus first. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think, I think that what I like what you're saying about getting out of your head and looking at Jesus is it reminds me of, I don't remember if I've talked about this on the podcast, but um, one of the first pieces of advice that you gave me when I was really like, I was super depressed and I was just really like not seeing any happiness in life, basically. And um, you said, do you, know, do you wanna know what you need to do? And I'm like, yes, please tell me. Because at this point in our spiritual direction relationship, it's so early on that I don't realize that you never really just tell me what to do. And so I'm thinking like, you're gonna actually tell me what to do. And I was like, please, please just tell me, I'll do anything. And you said, you need to get over yourself. And I was like, you cannot say that to me. <laughs> and I was um, very offended. And and it was 100% true. Like um, sometimes, and I'm realizing this, um, I was just talking with someone recently last week who, who struggles with depression. Um, sometimes to get out of our own head, to get over ourselves, um, we need, we need to, to look at others. And I don't just mean as a distraction. I mean, as, as a way of like, we are made to give of ourselves and sometimes giving of ourselves helps us to come back to who we truly are and who we're truly made to be. And so, so I think part of it is, is trying to look outside of ourselves in that way, but also, even if it's not, um, a giving of yourself in, in a very tangible way, there's something about, um, what you're saying about looking to, to God first, there's something about, um, like you need to invite the Lord into whatever it is that you're stuck on, whatever you're ruminating on, because ruminations is like such a thing for me. Um, I get, I get stuck on, you see this all the time in, in spiritual direction with me. Like I get stuck on one thing and it's just plays over and over and over and over in my head. Um, and often, the reason I'm stuck on it is because I'm not inviting the Lord into it. And so I'm just seeing it how I see it, which is where I'm stuck. And I'm not actually allowing Jesus to, to show me how he's seen it. And so I think that there's a, a great prayer in um, when, when you're like caught up in your own emotions, your own like very clearly biased 
opinions um, about your own life or about your own situation, I think it's important to pray, Lord, what do you see in this? Um, Lord, I need you to come into this and I need you to help me see as you are seeing um, because that's another way of, of drawing us outside of ourselves is, is trying to see things as the Lord sees them. And use your, use your uh, deep feeling, use your sensitivity in the service of others. Like you, I, I think that in a very real way, people with melancholic dispositions can love in a different way. And since I don't have it, I can probably even argue deeper way than others mm. because they, they, <clears throat> they feel deeply, they can love deeply, they can use that aspect of love mm. um, to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this gift of being melancholic. I'm going to use it to love people more deeply because of this gift I've been given. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for me, I, I tend to, I think I give people a real good first impression, but then I will often disappoint people later on because m with my personality, I know, <laughs> and I'm like with my, I, mean, I just, I, I tend to, I give a, I give a, a much, m much better uh, first impression that I do of like a extended and I have lots of long term friends and I know that people do, people love me immensely but there there is a I oftentimes will disappoint people because of those things mm. I just I'm I'm I tend to be really good on the surface stuff when it goes deeper I just I almost assume that it's good I assume that relationships are good mm -hmm. when they're not mm -hmm. you know and and I should have invested more I need to put more into it so in other words people think people that are melancholic probably don't have such a good first impression because they 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 they're looking for something deeper and service relationships just they're kind of boring to them they're they're not worth anything that I mean, unless unless we know each other for like a year this is my in my I'm imagining this but unless we know each other for a year um what is it really a friendship? Whereas I will call someone I talk to once at a pizza shop a friend, and it's like they're not right. They're not, um, but 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 there's there's something deeper. So I do think there's you, you find the gifts, find the beauty in it, and then utilize those, tithe of those, uh, be a good steward of those gifts as as you pass on that that joy. Okay, the person who asked it. Um put up a thing that said thank you for answering. So we oh. should scroll and pick a new question. Because there were lots Hi, of Hi, Maria. Questions. See you soon. Um, oh. Um, oh. Oh, that is Can we very scroll, convenient. Though? Paul, you're so good. Okay. Paul's giving us his phone right now to- This is weird because I can like see us. <laughs> oh, that's um, so strange. All right. Um, Anthonette asks, elevator explanation for the Chotki. Also, did I spell that correctly? Um, as far as I know, yes, you did, Anthonette. You did spell it correctly. Um, ele elevator explanation of the Chotki. 15, 15, 20 second explanation of what the Chokki is. Is that how long an elevator ride is? Yeah. Okay. Um, the. By the way, I want to show you guys my epic new Chokki. Jen Junta is going to love this. Jen Junta, pay attention. Um, yeah. Look, Jen and everybody. Sister just made me new Chokki because I gave my other ones with, away. With skull There's beads. There's skull beads. Did I say it right? Isn't that awesome? Memento mori. Skull so, like on on Manathos, that they uh, one one of the monasteries, especially on Manathos, has like every monk that dies, they just like draw on their skull. They <laughs> draw on the skulls. <laughs> um, they they draw on the skull, like they'll put the name of the person or something on the skull, and then they'll put it like up in a little display thing on the uh, on the shelves of the monastery. And so it's just it, it's um. The, the Franciscans do this as well in Rome. I think the Benedictines and the Carthusians will put like a, a memento mori on the desk. So there's a, and it might look kind of weird to the uninitiated, but it, it's a good reminder that we will die. And that's why I love having skull beads. Yeah. You want to talk? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm um, watching your head bob on here. <laughs> I, we're so cute though. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, the, so, so elevator explanation of the Chotki while you're looking for the next question. Yes. Um, so on the Chotki, we pray, Father Michael just showed his. I have one as well on my belt. Um, it has a tassel. Father Michael's doesn't because I don't know how to do a tassel. This is going to take way more than 15 to 20 seconds. Um, 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 we pray the Jesus prayer. So on each knot, we pray the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. There are variations of that. Some say... Um, Son of the living God. Some are shorter than that. Some are, but it's always, it's always got... Um, the fact that we are we are asking for God's mercy and we are proclaiming our own sinfulness. Um, so we're asking for his mercy upon us who are sinners. Um, and 
the, the intention of praying the Jesus prayer is not the same as um, like... It's it's not the same as um what's the prayer called when you're trying to like empty your mind that people like get really into today? Oh, like looking for nirvana, like Buddhist? Yeah, it's not like a, a Buddhism kind of thing where you're trying to empty your mind. It's where um your mind should should um be full um of Christ. And so so the point is to to focus all that you are doing um on Christ and to, to have a constant remembrance of him on his mercy upon you who are a sinner. Um, and we, Father Michael and I both like to, to think of it as, um, because it's, it's also a prayer that you can pray with breathing. We have a whole episode on the Jesus prayer. Um, I think it's called Byzantine Basics, the Jesus prayer. Anyways, um, breathing in Christ's mercy and breathing out our sinfulness is a, a way to, to think of this. Um, so... Um, anyways, the intention in praying the Jesus prayer is also the, the, the other reason for the Chotki is, um, it's, it's a way of responding and trying to fulfill what St. Paul calls us to of praying without ceasing. Um, because this is a prayer that this is part of the reason for, for learning to pray with our breathing. Um, because breathing is something that we do without ceasing. And so if you can, if you can, um, pray the Jesus prayer with your breathing, um, then you learn to, to pray it while you're doing dishes and, and while you're walking and even while you're sleeping and, and all of that. So. Amen. I'm convinced. You weren't listening. Can I go to your church? I was. Um, I can do two things at once. We just met in the elevator. That was good. (laughs) Um, okay. We have, we have a question from a kid. Well, it says from my child. I'm guessing that means they're still a kid, not like an adult child, but okay. We're going to pretend it's a kid anyways. I love that. I just like, there's a, oh, there was an eye roll. Everyone saw my eye roll. Sorry, I forgot that I'm yelling into the mic. You're yelling into the mic. It's okay. (laughs) All right. Do we follow the same spiritual and church laws that Jesus did as a kid? The kid asked, do we follow the same spiritual and church laws that Jesus did as a kid? Um, Great question, little one. Um, I would say. It's going to be really funny if it is an adult child. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you call me little one. I do call you little one. Um, So I would say. Uh, in one I sense, that said moo, but it says no. yes. Okay. <laughs> in one sense, uh, yes, that's a good one. Mar- let's do Mariana's after this. Um, okay. So, uh, in one sense, yes, we do because they're the laws of God, and God is unchanging, and God is eternal. And um, Jesus followed when he was a kid the Old Testament laws. So um, Jesus would be the one to fulfill. He'd be the one to fulfill the law. So the Old Testament law, as St. Paul explains, um, was put in place to prepare us for Jesus's fulfillment of that law. So the law came into play only after Adam and Eve sinned, ancestral sin came into the world. We had the weakening of our intellect and will, et cetera. So um, the Old Testament law was like a babysitter, right? It, 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 It kept an eye on us and and made sure that we were living in a way that our hearts were being prepared to be able to have the law written on our hearts, which comes from baptism and chrismation and Eucharist and the sacraments. So so the Old Testament law that Jesus followed um, was not done away with by him, but it was fulfilled in him. So Jesus, in other words, Jesus gave us the gift of being adults. He gave us the gift of maturity in the faith. He gave us the gift of having the law that he followed written on our hearts, but he was the lawgiver. So, but Jesus, as we know, because he was, um, he was circumcised. He was named on the eighth day. Um, he, he followed all these prescriptions of the law, um, of, of the law. And then he, by his death and resurrection, fulfilled the law. So the, the laws are still there. We follow them in a, in a fulfilled way. He followed them in kind of a, a, a caretaker way that they were there for a reason. Um, yeah. So if they would look different on the surface, um, than the laws we have now. Like for instance, um, when you before you went to the temple, around the temple, there were a bunch of little pools and these pools were for ritual washing. So you wouldn't walk into the temple until you had taken a little bath 
right? You, you would be you would be ritually purified, and then you would go into the temple. And nobody would go to the temple without this. So that's why the temple was was surrounded by these things. We don't have baby pools outside of our churches. We don't do this anymore before we go in the church. But what that little ritual bath showed was that we had to be purified, had to be washed clean of our sins through repentance before we walked into the temple, because we had to be clean outside and inside. And and they kind of showed forth each other. The outside cleansing showed the inside cleansing. Um, now we know that if you, if you walk in the church and you're dirty and smelly, it, that, that the outer cleanliness is not what matters. Christ wants us to be free from deadly sin when we go in the church, although we can go there as a penitent to stand in the back, if we're, even if we're not. Um, but so it would, that would look different, but the idea is the same. We know that when we were baptized, Jesus makes us clean. And as Jesus says multiple times, the, um, uh, the defilement, the, the uncleanliness actually comes from inside of us. It doesn't come from something outside that makes us dirty on the outside, but rather what makes us unclean is what we think in our head or what we believe in our heart or we speak in our voice. Those <gasps> Hi, are the cowboy. things. Cowboy. Cowboy joined. Uh, cowboy should have been here. Um, so like th- th- those worse. are the, those are the things. Stop work, cowboy priorities. Um, th- 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 those are the things that, um, that make us unclean. So, so baptism purifies us. Confession might be another way of saying that's kind of what that, that purification is, is more of a confession. It prepares us to join the community, et cetera, in church. That's a fantastic answer. Do you have another, anything else? No, that was great. All right. I want to move on to Mariana's question. I'm, re- I'm really, really good at talking to kids and giving answers to kids. You're really um, good at talking in general. I would have uh, dropped you years ago if I felt like you weren't good at <laughs> answering questions. All right. Um, question from Mariana Masters. Um, what advice do you have for when one is too tired to pray? That's that's an amazing question because um, my life. Um, so so just a, a practical thing. Um, oh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, I'm really excited to see you soon. I'm going to see her next week. Um, um the a practical a practical advice um practical piece of advice is that um like something that's helpful if you're if you're able to do it is is um choosing posture that will help us um when we are tired so because because there's there's absolutely something about like there's a great wisdom in the fact that we stand for our prayers in the church, you know, like we have these three hour services and there, and there are times. So, so there've been times that like, um, like if, if one of the nuns is really sick and there's only a couple of us home and then maybe we'll pray in the living room. Um, and this is, this is rare, but sometimes we'll like, maybe we'll pray in the living room and we'll just pray vespers. Um, Oh, Brayden and family. I love them. I just emailed them today. The, um, if we're sitting on the couch praying vespers, it is so hard for me to pray. It's so hard. Like, I just want to go to sleep. Um, it's really hard for me to focus on the words, to focus on the kathisma, so on and so forth. And, um, so I think there's, there's a great wisdom. There, there are other aspects to the posture of prayer, right? Like there are other reasons that we stand. Um, but, but one of them is just a very practical reason of it's easier to be attentive if our body is attentive. Um, so I, I would say that, that that's something like if you're, if you're struggling to pray and you can try standing in prayer or, um, or if standing is, is making you try, tired, try sitting. I wouldn't recommend like go lay in your bed and get under the covers and close your eyes and pray. I'd recommend um, that though. Would you really? Well, Are you being serious? Uh, sometimes. If you need sleep. If you need sleep, but if you're like, if this is a time that you're, that you really feel you're supposed to be praying and you're supposed to be attentive in prayer, then I would not recommend that. Um, And I would also say, just make sure that you say in prayer, Jesus, I'm tired. That's good. Yeah. Because like like, just Jesus wants us to speak exactly what's on our hearts. Mm -hmm. And there's times for, for prayer. Like when the apostles asked Jesus, how do we pray? And Jesus says, here's the, our father. There's times for prayer that has been given to us, the prayer that has been given to us by Jesus, by the church, and to pray that way. There's other times for just speaking exactly what's on our mind. And I do think that it, that we need to, especially in this generation, we need to get better at at, at utilizing. C.S. Lewis talks about this too. Um, but we need to get better at just saying every thought that comes into our mind can be prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I just read a, a thread on Twitter today um, I didn't know this, but I guess some Protestants 
Um, they, and this makes sense because of, of the Protestant, the usual Protestant aversion to praying to saints and the mother of God. But some Protestants have a very specific definition of prayer that means like the worship and the worship and um, requests do, that are due to God alone. So I would never say, I pray you, Sister Natalia, like, like in Old English, right? Like Shakespearean English, I pray you. I would never say, I pray to the mother of God because she's not worthy of that type of worship. Whereas we in the apostolic churches, we will absolutely say, I, I pray you, or, or I, I pray to the mother of God, or I pray to the saints, because all that, it just, it refers to a conversation. And that's what prayer refers to a conversation. Now, we don't normally in everyday use say, I pray to somebody who's still alive. We use it for the, those who have died. Um, but that's the, that's the type of prayer I'm talking about. Even when you're tired, yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only halfway joking because sometimes I think it is, it is fine to say, Jesus, I'm tired and I'm going to pray till I fall asleep. Then just fall asleep. You know? I did this the other night. It, it can be, it can be very, it can be very scrupulous of us to say, you know, if, if I've made my, if I've made a promise to myself or my spiritual director or somebody that I'm going to pray, you know, Compline or I'm going to pray, a, a, you know, a full roll, roll around the chalk here or something like that. If, if I've prayed some, if I've made a promise, then yes, stand up and pray it. But if I just, if I know that I need to pray before I go to sleep, I, I don't have a problem with laying down in bed and praying then and just praying till I fall asleep. That's actually really beautiful. But I, I do think uh, I do think some people has it would hesitate to say Jesus, I'm too tired to pray, or Jesus, I'm going to try to pray, but I'm tired because that feels like 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 you're talking to the human being. Mm-hmm. Like if if somebody said, Hey, do you have ten minutes? And I said, I don't know. I'm going to literally lay down and like talk to you while I'm laying on my on the phone. Like I'm going to leave the phone on and just talk to you while I'm falling asleep. That might be offensive to say. I'm out cold within 30 seconds. You know, the person might hang up in anger, but but with God, it's like, ah, eh, you know, it, it, as I'm talking to him as I fall asleep. It's that's actually really beautiful. So th- there's a balance there. We if, if that's all of our if, if our only prayer is praying as I fall asleep, there's a problem, right? I need to pray also when I'm very attentive. But to what what's the old phrase? Sorry, I think this is Fulton Sheen. One last thing, I think Fulton Sheen used to tell the story about somebody said, "Father, can I can I smoke while I pray?" And he said, no, you can't smoke while you pray, but you can pray while you smoke, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's just like, can can I, can I lay down in bed while I pray? No, but you can pray while you're laying down in bed. In other words, it's the same action, but it's, it's, it's the reason why I'm doing it. If I'm, if I'm going to pray while I'm falling asleep. Okay. Now I'm talking too long. Go ahead. Yes. Um, the, I, well, I wanted to say something that you touched on a little bit. Um, I do think it's important. So, so if you, if you are, um, like I always, I always pray the Jesus prayer as I'm, as I'm going, as I'm falling asleep. Um, and, um, and, and that's beautiful and it's good. And it's good to, to pray as you're falling asleep. I like don't know a better way to fall asleep than with the Lord. Um, but I do think that it's important. I like that you make the distinction of if this is the only time that you're praying or the only way that you're praying, that should be reconsidered. And, um, so what I wanted to say is it's really helpful to also have, um, some sort of rule of prayer rule. That's a really hard word to say. It's oh those, yeah, everybody says else. that. You have that uh, oh. <laughs> rule. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh God, it's you too. Um, a, a, a rule of prayer um, that's either, if you have a spiritual director, absolutely have a rule of prayer with your spiritual director um, that, that they help you to come up with. Um, if you don't have a spiritual director, then that's something that um, you need to, to just pray through. But what's helpful about that is like, I don't, as, as a monastic, I have a rule of prayer that's given to me and, um, and, by by Mother Theodora, by my my hegumena, um, and it's like when I, I I know I have this commitment, and so it's easier. It's not easy, but it's easier for me to say, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to um to like plow through, and I'm gonna maybe like stand so that I can pray the rest of my cell rule and things like that. Um, but what's what's difficult if you don't have that rule? If you don't have a specific time that you're going to be praying, or if you don't have a specific um, like context for your prayer or something, then it is harder to not just give in to the like I'm too tired. Like if it's just like your goal is just 
pray every day, um, then it's it's much easier to be like, you know, I'm kind of tired today and, and to give into that. But if you know, like, I've said that I'm going to pray for 20 minutes, um, I'm going to do the 20 minutes and then I'm going to go to bed. But um, that's not always the case, but it is helpful, I think, to have some kind of rule of prayer, some sort of routine. Rule is really hard to say. Yeah. All right. Um, can we go? Can we do the next one? I'm glad our listeners love me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I wouldn't. Fine. I wouldn't make funny if I didn't love you. Um, all right, Krista says it is. Is it true to say that it is better to pray a rosary poorly, namely totally distracted, than not to pray it at all? I am always distracted and struggle with it always. Um, this this actually gets back one thing, Krista, to to what I was something I was thinking of earlier. Um, please, parents, and I know that you're you're a parent. Um, Do you know who that is? I think I do. Oh, it says mom. Yeah. Buh. No, I, I think, I, I, I can't see the picture. If that's, okay. are, are you the Krista from Lux? I think you are. Anyway, um, let us know if you are. Give a thumbs up or something like that. Um, <laughs> um, so if, uh, in other words, I, and the, I think this is a, a You tense. just said in other words after you'd given no words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, now we're even. We've now, we've now made fun of each other. Okay, um, exactly 50%. Um, Go on with the chlorophyll. Um, oh my gosh. Um, yes. It's so if you're, if you're a parent, oh, hi, Krista. Um, if, if you're a parent, uh, please don't give your children, uh, prayers as punishments. I've known, I've heard parents say that like their kid gets in trouble and they go say, pray, go pray a decade of the rosary in the corner. And, and it's like, your child is always going to associate the rosary with being in trouble. And they're going to psychologically associate any prayer with being in trouble. So please do not give prayer as as, as a <laughs> that was a squirrel. Um, please please do not give prayer as a punishment. Um, and in that same vein, um, I would I would say be careful uh, what you pray for as you're falling asleep because it's the same psychological thing. I, I, I know a lot of people, I do it myself, I pray the Jesus prayer as I'm falling asleep. And if that's the only time I pray the Jesus prayer, then it'd be like a Pavsov's dog thing. I would, Mike Miley just started a live video. Mike. Mike? <laughs> You're competing with us. Just kidding. Come on. <laughs> um, the, uh, Why you gotta um, be so Well, his, wa- his wife is watching us, so ha, Mike. Uh, <laughs> well, um, we don't know. She might have left. I don't think it's true. <laughs> um... I don't know. I wasn't listening. This, I was this listening is like my real life. Oh, um, so like I, I'm okay praying that Chalky as I fall asleep because I will also pray it many other times during the day. But if you only, <laughs> I'll tell you after. I I only um, I only if I only pray the Jesus prayer as I was falling asleep, it'd be like Pavlov's dogs. I would start praying the Jesus prayer and I would get tired. Um, so I don't think that's what you're saying, Krista. But I would just I'm, I'm warning the whole world, whoever's listening to us, um, to to. Like, don't make sure you're not only associating prayer with either being in trouble with your children or, or um, going to sleep and things like that. Um, and then I think the, another answer to that, Krista, is just, again, to make, like, I, don't, I forget if you were on here when I, when I mentioned it earlier, but and make every single action, every single thought that goes through your head, you can make into a prayer. So when you're at your best, when you're when in the best part of the day, that you might be at work or you might be taking care of your kids. Or you might be doing something else, but if you can turn that into a prayer, um, I just, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm a hopeless romantic in this way, even though I'm celibate. Like if I, if I, if, if I was married and I thought that, and if I like, if my wife just was, was sitting at work and she decided to, and she decided, hi, <laughs> Father Nathan. Hi, hi, Father Nathan. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was really funny. I saw his face on there. <laughs> like if I, oh, I'm going to watch it on here again. It's delayed. <laughs> um, if I, if I like, if my wife's like, Hey, <laughs> if I, <laughs> we could have to screenshot that later on. Like if, if, if my wife was like live, st- I need to start texting him when we're doing this poor guy. He's coming into his office. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, and it's like, it's like if, oh my gosh, I'm so distracted today. Um, today? 
Okay, so if my if my wife was like sitting at work, is like I'm gonna live stream, like I'm literally gonna put you on on my on my desk on my desk here at work, and I'm gonna just talk with you throughout the day. Or like I've seen people do this, like they'll be working a sec- the secretary at one of the parishes back in in Denver used to do this. She would she would have her headphone in, and she'd be like she'd be talking to her husband just the whole day long. Like he probably had his on too, and if she needed to talk to someone, he just understood if she started talking to something that wasn't him, that like he would just know, like she's talking to somebody else. So in other words, how romantic is it that that we can literally talk to Jesus all day long and turn every conversation we're having with somebody else or ev- with anybody into a conversation with him. Like that's, it's just a beautiful act of love to do that. So, so one type of prayer might exhaust us. One type of prayer, we might always be distracted, but even distractions can be turned into prayers. And, and if the whole day is, then I don't think we're, we're not neglecting God. Now, I do think it's important to say especially for parents who rarely get time alone. It's important to make that time. It's important to find silence. It's important to have people in your life that can babysit or watch the kids for a while or do whatever. It's important to have moments of intentional prayer that you're doing nothing other than talking to Jesus because it's the same thing with us. Like we might, I might not mind if my wife's on the, on the phone all day kind of chatting with me while she's being distracted, but I also want very, very specific time with her. I also want like time where she's just, she's only talking to me and nobody else. She's not looking at her phone. I've shared this before. The one fight I ever got in when I was dating was me watching the football game over my girlfriend's shoulders at a bar. Like I just, I was, I know, I know, I know, I know. And I, I was, I was, I was watching the, the football game and she totally caught me multiple times. Didn't say anything the first few times. Multiple and then times. she didn't say anything. So I didn't know she caught me. <laughs> So like, so then, and then she got mad. I'm like, I, I so I, I totally get it. I totally get it. That was that, that's me being a bad boyfriend. I totally get it. So, um, so yes, so we, we need both, but having that intentional time is good as well. And let's do one more question. Okay. Um, also that you pick, I laughed at two things because Shalimar says, literally just staring at sister and Talia's eyes. And then, um, <laughs> and, um, Someone at one point said, um, squirrel and, um, cowboy replied, yes, Krista, what can I do for you? (laughs) (laughs) Which is very funny. Okay. Um, (laughs) this is a question from Mark Sheffleton, who's a friend of the monastery. He comes out sometimes for retreat. Um, praying the divine office is something I associate with monastics. Father Michael, is it normal for a Byzantine Catholic priest to pray the divine office? Yes. Um, it it is, uh, especially those of us that are celibate, because we are we're kind of uh, attempting to be monastics. Um, it says live video pause because Whaley's calling me. Anyway, Whaley, hang up. <laughs> Can I just hit the red? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Uh, just get, someone just read your thumbprint. Sorry, like, guys. That's totally what? a privacy thing. You put your <laughs> your, your thumb like went right over the screen. I just <laughs> think I just think it's funny. Um, now Byzantine, I, I really did lose what I was Byzantine thinking. Byzantine priests praying the office. Thank you. Yes, yes. Byzantine priests, especially their cell, I think should pray the office. I think everybody should. But but in the in the in the Byzantine tradition, um, they're they're really in the in the ancient church. It was there was the monastic office and the cathedral office. So so uh, parishes prayed different offices than the monks did. About. A thousand years ago, to overgeneralize, um, those two offices were combined. So you have the cathedral office, which was happening in the parishes, and which are like matins and vespers, and then you have the the monastic office that is all of the this the, a lot of psalms chanted straight throughout the day. Um, so some form of the office has always been done by parish priests, but it used to be a different office than the monks would do. Nowadays, it's the same thing. Um, to answer your question, but yes, the, the, the rhythm of the day that is infused with prayer, that's what the divine office is. It, it's, it's making sacred space and sacred time. We really need to focus on that. If that's why it's so important to have an icon, icon, uh, icon corner in your home, because you, you've created in your home, sacred space. And then also to make sure that you have sacred time by breaking up the day into prayer. This is harder for people that are, that are living in the world, including priests. But, but if, if we can have sacred space and sacred time in our homes, those are little tastes of heaven because that's what heaven is. Sacred, heaven is sacred space and sacred time. So, um, making should we have those in our lives? So, um, so you're, the basic answer is yes. We we pastors try to make sacred space and sacred time, just like the monks do. It is um, it is different than in the Roman 
Catholic priesthood where you um, you to. promise. Yes. Yeah. You, uh, the Roman Catholic priests promise to pray um, the complete office every day. And um, I would expect someone just ask if the Byzantine office is different than the Roman one. Um, and it is. And it's it's similar in structure just in the sense of like there's lots of psalms and there's lots of, yeah. But um, I would expect that part of the reason it's not promised in the Byzantine is also that it's just like practically speaking yeah. is much it's more difficult longer. to pray the whole office. Like a Roman can pray full morning prayer in how long, Paul? 10 minutes. Um, and if a Byzantine priest is going to pray full morning prayer, it's got to be two hours. Um, Especially so. if it's chanted and sung. Yeah. But that's, that's oh, that's the, true if it's not chanted. And, and I saw that Melchite Joe just said something good. He said, definitely pray the office, of course. Don't expect to pray at all, but pray what you're able to. That's yeah. a very Byzantine answer, Joe. Thank you. And um, I, I think that I just want to speak to your breaking up the day thing um, because this was something that I did as a, as a teacher because I, I visited the monastery. I was already in discernment with the monastery and then I was a high school teacher um, in the midst of that. Like, And I'm paying off my loans while teaching in order to enter the monastery. And and I started breaking up my day, even if it's just even if it's just a a ten minute prayer. If you if you're like even if 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 literally all you have time for in your day is to pray one of the psalms from that particular hour um, at like seven, like the the different hours of the day. So I would I would pray something in the morning. I'd pray something at noon. I'd pray something in the evening and something before bed when I was a teacher. And and what I loved about this is something that I loved when I visited the monastery is when I was at the monastery for my observership, a three to six week visit. I was there for five weeks, and I loved that the day felt to me. Um, like my day was spent in prayer and then the other things that had to happen. And of course I'm trying to pray while I do those other things, but the, the other things that happened are kind of like a stepping away from the prayer for a second, as opposed to when I was in the world and I felt like my whole, my whole day is spent on these other things. And then every once in a while I step away for prayer. And so I think that there's something to having this structure of prayer in your day, um, broken up throughout the day so that you're continually bringing yourself back to um, focusing on the Lord. Why are you smiling? It's other things are going on in my head. <laughs> I don't even want to know. Sorry. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I um, apologize. I'm watching the football game over your shoulder. <laughs> I'm doing my brain's elsewhere. Sorry, okay. God. I um, apologize. That's everything. Just pray during the day and focus on Jesus and whatever. <laughs> um, I'm really we, sorry. My mind is literally going on. It's things. God who forgives. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everyone just saw that though. That was live. You I just know. did that live. Uh, look how red I am. <laughs> um, you're, you're really red. <laughs> okay. Um, the should we just like do prayer intentions yeah. and blessing and yeah. Um, Thank this you. Is technically, Thank your you. episode. Yeah. Thank you all for your questions. This is great. Thank you for your patience. This I was our it. first Instagram live, and it won't be as awkward and like boomerish as uh, I can't next time. promise that. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll, we'll at least have done it once. I won't have the awkwardness like, Paul, am I doing this right? <laughs> In the beginning. Um, all right. Uh, yes. Pr- so I'm going to do my prayer intentions first. Um, if, you're, if you are, if you're live, um, above sister's head is a, is a photo of Bishop Gerald Dino of eternal memory. He passed away last year. Um, he was, I've now had one, two, three three bishops um, and he was the middle bishop. Uh, my ordaining bishop was is now the Metropolitan Archbishop of Pittsburgh. Who was my tonturing bishop? Who was or he was? Who was? Oh yeah. yeah so my, my ordaining bishop was also her tonturing bishop. That's pretty cool. In, in, in Pittsburgh, yes, which is pretty cool. Um, and so he's now the Metropolitan. Bishop Gerald Dino came after him and he passed away last year and I love him immensely. Um, so please pray for the soul. That'll be my prayer intention this week. Please pray for the soul of Bishop Gerald Dino, um, who, when he, when he retired and we got a new bishop, he became the Protestant chalice and he was just always around the office and we just called him grandpa. And it was, it was amazing. Um, such a loving, loving man. I would, I think if of all of the, of all of the deceased clergy I know in our, in our church, that that may be a saint one day. I think it'd be him. Mm. I think he'd be he'd be a great cause to open up and uh, and uh, anyway, who knows what our Lord will do? But um, I guess I guess so. Not I'm asking you to pray for him and also pray to him. And if you have any miracles that happen through the intercession of Bishop Gerald Dino, uh, let us know. Call the Eparchy of Phoenix. 
There, there's a documentary about Mother Teresa in which the the doctor, one of the doctors who operated on her, was being interviewed, and um, he says he was like he's operating on her, and um, he was like, and and I think at, at one point like she had died and they brought her back and whatever, but he said he was like it was that awkward moment where I was praying to Mother Teresa <laughs> for Mother Teresa. <laughs> but anyway, so nice. pray for and to Bishop Charles. Yes. Amen. Um, I'm going to ask for prayers for um, my new friend, Rudy, um, as he he's just on like a crazy journey and um, is discerning some pretty big things. And so so pray for my friend, Rudy. Um, and second, this should have been first, hashtag aunt fail. Um, I have a, a new baby niece who was born this morning. Um, and her name is Isabella Grace. <laughs> and I, being the awkward person that I am, replied to the family text and was like, oh, baby Bella, little mushroom, one cute little fungus. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, because her name's Bella and like baby Bella is the kind of mushroom that you buy in the store. Like the oh, baby, like a... I did not know this. Anyways, pray for a little baby Bella who's, who's <laughs> she real cute. Um, and my brother Brian and his wife Lindsay, who are her parents. And pray for Paul, who's sitting behind the camera, who's Should we just, like, entering the seminary. Can, can we do that? Yeah, look. Paul! <laughs> Paul says hi. And he's right, it is a messy desk, but we don't, I don't think we, I don't think we, Sorry about that. we did it I, low I enough to see. I think I just got that, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, love y'all. Father, give the Let blessing. May Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, have mercy on you. May our Lord... Send you forth this day and every day um, with the appreciation of the gifts he's given you in your temperaments, in your, in your skills, in your age, in your wounds, in your graces, in your joys, in your sufferings. Uh, may you appreciate all of these as a gift. Um, may you always treasure the small things of your church tradition and the small things of the other church traditions that you are learning about. May you always see these little gifts also as, as steps towards holiness and moments of our Lord's grace in your life. May you desire to truly pray constantly um, and take every moment as an opportunity to converse and to grow closer to your Christ, to your Savior, to your Lord, to your King, to your God. Um, may you always remember to pray for us and may we always remember to pray for you. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bye, all. Bye. Love you. Love you guys. Love you, Father Michael. How do we stop this? Boomer. Paul. No, literally, I don't know how to stop it. You just hit the X. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now. <laughs> <laughs>